Hello guys, in this video I want to show how to find the complex eigenvectors and eigenvalues for this matrix. So the trick for this problem is sometimes when you're given a matrix, if my eigenvalues are real numbers, then we have no problems to find eigenvectors. But the problem is going to be a little bit tricky if my eigenvalues are going to be complex numbers. So in this video, for this simple matrix, I'm going to show you the most simplest example how you should deal with complex eigenvalues to find your eigenvectors. So, for step one, as you remember, I want to find the eigenvalues of this matrix. And eigenvalues is a real simple formula. I just need to find all such values lambda that the de determinant of a minus lambda i equals to zero. And as you already know, like your a is this mat. Oh, sorry, like this matrix equals to a. That's right, like this. Okay. Okay, so we have this. So from here follows that I need to find the determinant for which lambda is zero for this matrix minus lambda one one minus lambda. And you already can see why I choose this matrix for this video because this oh not minus one minus lambda because this determinant is super easy. What I will get oh I actually need to change something. I will change here put minus one. Why minus one? You will see in a second. So I have minus lambda times minus lambda, so I have minus lambda squared. And then I have uh, minus 1 times minus 1. So minus minus will cancel, so I have plus 1. And what do I want to have for the right-hand side? The right-hand side, let me erase a, I want to be equal to 0. So from here I follow that lambda squared plus 1 equals to 0. Okay, so I have this equation, this quadratic equation, and I can see that for this quadratic equation, my roots are going to be plus minus i. So my eigenvalues for this matrix is plus minus i. Okay, so with step one, we are done. For step two, right now I have two eigenvalues, and for each of these eigenvalues, I want to find the corresponding eigenvector. Or in other words, uh, if this matrix represents uh, the map between two vector spaces, then eigenvectors are going to be rescaled. I want to find the, what coordinates of eigenvectors should I have uh, that under this transformation, this vector is going to be rescaled by this i. So let's find this vector. Uh, so my first uh, eigenvalue is lambda 1 equals to i. And if you know from the definition, we want to find this uh, eigenvector just subtracting i. Uh, for this matrix. So instead of lambda, I'm going to put in my i. So we have minus i, minus 1, 1, and minus i. So what is my next step? This matrix on the left hand side is actually equals a minus lambda i. So my eigenvectors are going to be based on the null space of this matrix. So what does it mean? It means if I'm going to take any vector x, and I'm saying that x belongs to null of a minus lambda i. And what is the by definition that x belongs to null? It means that uh, a minus lambda i times x equals to 0. So I want to find all possible x for which this is true. So how should I start? I should say that let's take my x with coordinates x1 and x2. Then I, call, uh, then I want this to be true. Then I want to solve the system of equations, which is minus i uh, minus 1, 1 minus i times x and 1 and x2 equals to 0. And why do I care about uh, solving the system of the new equation? Because in the beginning, I'm given any x1 and x2. But by solving the system, I will find the relation between x1 and x2. And after I will find the relation, I will plug in them back. And that's how I'm going to get my eigenvectors. OK. But solving the system is the same as just to find the raw, raw echelon form of the matrix. So let's, let's, let's do it. Yeah, and this is where complex numbers are important because here, uh, and in general case, it's going to be very more complicated complex numbers, we don't know how to simplify it. So what I recommend for this one? Uh, let's take 
this element. And let's call this element z. Then z is a complex number. And in this case, we can see that z is not 0. And what I know about complex numbers? I know that if complex number z is not 0, in this case, z is not 0, then I can find such complex uh, number w that z times w equals to 1. So why am I doing this? Because I want to multiply the first row, here's yeah, the first row, by some w to make this 1. And when I'm going to make this 1, I'm going to make this number to be 0. So we see. So let's do it. So in this case, uh, what is my z equals to? My z equals to minus i. So I want to solve this equation. Minus i times w equals to 1. But we can see if I'm going to multiply this uh, by minus i, yes, no, by i, both sides, then we'll have minus i squared w equals to i, then minus i squared is minus 1, minus minus 1 is 1, so from here we'll get the w equals to i. So I want to multiply my first row by w, and let's do it. Uh, for this one, I will get that minus 1 times i, as we know, is going to be just equals to 1. But minus 1 times i is going to be just minus i. And voila! Right now we have 1, 1, minus i and i. So what can we do right now? We can multiply uh, by minus 1 the first row and add to the second one. And what I will get? I will get 1 minus i, 0, and if I'm going to multiply this by minus uh, 1, I will get i plus i. Oh, sorry, this is not uh, i, it's minus i. Yeah, minus i here, sorry for mistake. Then uh, it's going to be pl plus i minus i, so it's going to be 0. And I got this matrix. And you can see that by doing any row, opera row, opera uh, row operations, I cannot simplify this matrix anymore. So what should I do next? Uh, here I need to think, let's multiply by my x1 and x2, and the whole thing I want to be equal to 0, 0. Yes? And from here you can see the second column, second row doesn't matter, but from the first row I will get the relation that x1 minus ix2 equals to 0. Yes? So from here what I will get, I will get that x1 equals ix2. And this is desired, is my desired relationship between x1 and x2. So you can see in the same way, by having this vector x1 and x2, we ended up that my vector x is equals to uh, x1 is ix2, x2. And right now, here we can think about x2 as a parameter t. So let's make x2 equals to t. Then I will have i t t. So here we did, we said x2 equals to t. And then we can see that t is a scalar, so we can factor it. So we'll have t equals i1. And now we can see if this vector x belongs to nullity, then this x has this form. And this form is just rescaling of the only one vector. So first thing, I know that nullity is one-dimensional, and the basis of this uh, like space is going to be the eigenvector i1. OK, so let me show you really quick the solution for the second one. So for the second one, what's going to change? I'm going to put minus here. I will change this to plus plus. I will apply the same method when I'm going to multiply by w. So after this, I'm going to multiply this minus i, uh, my first row. And then I need to subtract uh, my, uh, fir my first row from the second one. And I will get exactly 0, 0. So from this, repeat the same as we did for the first eigenvector. I will have x1 equals i x2 equals to 0. Then my x1 equals minus i x2. So from here, I can conclude that my vector x equals to x1, x2 equals to uh, minus i, x2, but x2 I can think as a t, 
and t. So it's equals to t. So I can see that my eigenvector is going to be minus i and 1. So what can I say is that my two eigenvector complex eigenvectors are going to be just uh, plus minus i. And the last step, number four, let's check our answer just from of one of the eigenvectors. So my original matrix is 0, minus 1, 1, uh, 0. So let's multiply by my I vector, eigenvector i1, which has corresponding eigenvalue i. So we'll multiply by i1 and see what I will get. Uh, for the first uh, component, I will get 0, minus 1. For the second component, we'll get just i. And you're like, hmm, wait a second, where is my i? But let's try to factor i. So if I'm going to factor i, I can see this, my component equals to 1. But by what value do I need to multiply by i to get minus 1? Exactly, I need to multiply this by i. And voila, I get my eigenvector. Sorry, eigenvalue, my eigenvector, as a result of taking my matrix and multiplying by this eigenvector. So, for every math problem, please, after you get your result, always check your result. Okay. Uh, guys, thank you for watching. Let me know if you have any questions about this problem. I hope you enjoyed this problem. If you're not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. And let me know if you have any questions. Bye-bye.